we're being asked to find the power series centered at zero for this function. This is actually a really nice problem. Let's go ahead and do it. So the trick or the way to do this problem is to recognize that you have to start with 1 over 1 plus x. And you have to use 1 over 1 plus x to get uh, 5 over 1 plus x cubed. So 1 over 1 plus x can be written as an infinite series. It's 1 over 1 minus negative x. And now we're going to use a formula. Let me write it over here. 1 over 1 minus x is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this is true provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1, right? This is just an infinite geometric series. So this can be written as the sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative x to the n, which is equal to the sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the n. So we went kind of fast there, so let me explain what we did. Uh, this equality is true because we took negative x and we plugged it in here. So we got negative x to the nth power, which we have here. Now how did we go from this to this? Well, negative x to the n can be written as negative 1 times x to the n. And properties of exponents allow us to write this as negative 1 to the n times x to the n. Very powerful, useful stuff. Okay, so we need to produce a 3. So to do that, we'll just take this and we'll just start differentiating. So to differentiate this, it might be helpful to write it like this. 1 plus x to the negative 1. So I'll go ahead and write the right-hand side down again. So this is the sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the n. All right, now we'll start taking derivatives. So if you take the derivative once, you bring the negative down, so you get 1 plus x to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside. But the derivative of the inside is just 1, so I won't bother writing it. So this is equal to the sum, okay, and where do we start the n? That is the question. Well, in this case, it starts at 1. Now, how did I do that? If you take 0 and you plug it in here for your n's, you get negative 1 to the 0, x to the 0. Then you're supposed to add and then plug in 1, etc. So some other stuff. That should be 3 dots, not, not 4 dots. There we go, 3 dots. <laughs> okay, this is 1 plus some stuff. But this is a 0. Right? a0 is equal to 1. So when you take the derivative of a sub 0, well, you get 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. So the, so the 0th term goes away. So it starts at 1 now because this guy no longer exists. Right? This is 0 when you take the derivative. So you shift this up by 1. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you know to do that? Well, anytime you take a derivative, always check. Plug in whatever number you have here for your n's. If you get a number, just shift it up by 1. So in this case, we went from 0 to 1. So this is negative 1 to the n. We don't differentiate that. Uh, it's constant, but we differentiate this. So we bring the n down, and we get x to the n minus 1. Oh, and this sum goes to infinity. All right, we don't have a 3 yet, so let's take the derivative again. So you bring the negative 2 down. So you get 2, 1 plus x to the negative 3. Chain rule, again, the derivative of the inside is 1. We won't write it. And we have the infinite sum, which goes to infinity, right? That's right there. And then n equals, all right, let's see. Do we have to shift up again? If you plug in 1 for all your n's, you're going to get negative 1 to the 1 times 1 times x to the 0. So this is a 0. That's a number, because this is equal to 1. So when we differentiate, it goes away. So we have to start, instead of starting at 1, we start at 2. If this wasn't a number, like if it was like 2x, then we wouldn't do anything. But if it's 3, then we do something. So if it's a number, you shift up. If, if it's not, you don't do anything. All right, negative 1 to the n, n, n minus 1, and then x to the n minus 2. Almost there. We are almost done. So it's not a long problem, it's just a little bit tricky.
I'm going to bring this back downstairs. We have 1 plus x cubed. And this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. Now, we wanted a 5 here in the original question. Let me scroll up so you see it. See, we wanted the power series for this guy, except we have a 2. So now we can fix it, right? How do we fix it? Well, we can multiply by 5 halves. If I multiply the left-hand side by 5 halves and multiply the right-hand side by 5 halves, then boom, there it is. So 5 over 1 plus x quantity cubed, this is beautiful stuff, is equal to the sum as n runs from 2 to infinity. Let's put the 5 halves on the inside. So 5 halves, negative 1 to the n times n times n minus 1, and then times x to the n minus 2. And that is the power series. Okay, that is the power series. The question didn't ask us, but if it would have, if it would have asked for the radius of convergence, well, the radius of convergence, or rather the interval of convergence, the original interval of convergence was this one, right? And all we did was take derivatives. So whenever you take derivatives, you cannot gain convergence. You can only lose it. So we had already lost it at the endpoints. So if the question did ask for the interval of convergence, it's just this one, right? That would be the interval of convergence. But it didn't ask for that, so, uh, but just in case it did. <laughs> I hope this helps someone out there. This is actually a really nice problem. And uh, it's not hard, but you do have to watch out for this, the, these maneuvers here, the shifting up. Remember, the secret is plug in the value of n. If it's a constant and you take the derivative, you got to shift up. If it's not a constant, like if it's 5x, 10x, you know, x squared, anything like this, and you take the derivative, don't do anything. Just leave it the same. I hope this helps.